Now, a lot of times when people think about improving their performance in a given area, their first thought is to put in more effort. Maybe they need to log more hours or do more research or practice that presentation one more time. Well, I'm not gonna encourage you to start slacking off, but in this video, what I would like to share is another technique that you might not have thought about. It's visualization. Hi, I'm Dr. Patricia Thompson. I'm a corporate psychologist and executive coach. And on this channel, I share a lot of videos that will help you to get ahead in the work world. So if you wanna see more of those videos, make sure to like and subscribe. Also check out my website, Silver Lining Psychology, where you'll learn more about the coaching services I offer, as well as the variety of online courses that I have to get you ahead in areas like emotional intelligence, mindfulness, productivity, accountability, uh, leadership, all sorts of different areas. Okay, so now that we've covered that, let's talk about this idea of visualization. And you know, typically it's something that people have heard of to some extent. Um, very often you'll hear of performance psychologists um, helping people to do visualization in the sports world. For example, here are a couple of quotes that I came across that I think are really um, instrumental in terms of showing how beneficial visualization could be. So this first quote is, I always visualize the run before I do it. By the time I get to the start gate, I've run that race a hundred times already in my head, picturing how I'll take the turns. And that's from Lindsey Vaughn, who's a World Cup winning skier. Here's one from Idris Elba, an actor who we've probably all heard of. And he said, I think my imagination has always kept me going. I just imagined myself collecting awards. I just imagined myself getting big parts. That's part of my inner magic. If I can see myself doing it, I can do it. So the fact is the mind is a really powerful thing. Just think of the placebo effect. It's the effect where people in an experiment, um, one group is given the active substance and one group is given an inactive substance, you know, the equivalent of a sugar pill. And then they look at the results across time. And very often what you find is that there is a segment of people who've been given the placebo who get better. Um, and, you know, a lot of times in research, they see that as an annoyance that has to be controlled for. But if you look at it another way, you could actually see it as this really fascinating manifestation of just how powerful the mind can be in terms of changing outcomes just based on our expectations. Um, there's another really interesting research study that Ellen Langer, who's a psychologist did, and she talked about it in her book called Mindfulness. And in that book, what they did was they took elderly men and they took them away on a camp. And the way that the camp was set up was that the environment was set up to reflect how things were when those men were much younger. So they had TV shows from when they were younger, you know, magazines from when they were younger, and they were supposed to talk with each other as if they were in an earlier time, like, you know, the 50s or 60s or whatever their younger time would be. And at the beginning of the study, they took a bunch of um, tests that looked at things like physical strength, eyesight, memory, things along those lines. And then after they had had, I can't remember the period, like a week or two in that environment, they took follow-up measures. And what they found was that the men improved in a lot of measures like eyesight, strength, hearing, memory, cognitive tests, things along those lines. Um, and so again, she took that as evidence of the power of our minds in terms of changing our outcomes uh, maybe changing our expectations and even changing how our physiology can work. Another really interesting study showed how visualization can also affect our brain and how it um, is wired. And in this particular study, they had three groups of people. Um, in the first group, they were taught a five finger pattern on the piano and they were told to practice that every day. The second group was taught that pattern, but instead of practicing it on a piano, they were just supposed to imagine themselves doing it. And then the third group, the control group, didn't do anything, just to kind of have a baseline. And what they found was that after a week, 
the motor cortex changes in the group that had played the piano and the group that had imagined themselves playing the piano were almost identical. Meanwhile, the control group hadn't changed at all in terms of their motor cortex. And so again, I find this stuff super fascinating as you can tell, but it just really shows the power of the mind and how it's all connected. Okay, so now that we've talked about some of the research behind it, I wanna give you some tips if you wanna try out visualization on your own, you know, whether you have a meeting that you're nervous about, or maybe you wanna get ready for the next job, visualizing yourself having it, whatever it is, you know, I think that it wouldn't hurt to add visualization to your arsenal. So how do you visualize? Well, the first thing you wanna do is get your body in a calm state. And you can do that simply by closing your eyes and doing some deep breathing. And I have another video on meditation that you can check out. I'll put the link below um, that can give you some additional tips. But the main thing is you just wanna calm your body, get yourself in a really relaxed and receptive, but also alert state of mind. The next thing that you wanna do when you're visualizing is to really engage your senses. So, you know, some people are better at visualizing than others. I can say actually I'm not necessarily the greatest one at this compared to some people that I know. Um, but what you do wanna do is try to engage your senses. So, you know, what are you seeing in your visualization? What's happening around you? What are you hearing? Are there any sense associated with it? How are the people, if there are others around you, responding? What does it feel like, you know, either emotionally, but I'm also talking like in a really tactile way. What does it feel like? Are you wearing, you know, a specific suit? Are you in an environment, I don't know, where you're feeling the ground underneath your feet? Or if you're at a lectern, you know, what does the wood feel like um, underneath your fingers? Um, so really kind of engage all of your senses to the extent that you can, and that will help to make your visualization more vivid. Then you'll also want to get into the emotional aspect of the visualization. So how are you feeling? I want you to anticipate the best possible outcome that you could have. Um, maybe people are around you congratulating you and you're feeling a real sense of pride, or maybe you're feeling a sense of peace or contentment as a result of what's happened. Um, and what you want to do is just kind of loop those feelings in your mind, really try to conjure them up so that you can make your meditation even, um, or your visualization, again, even more vivid. And what I would suggest is that if you're someone who has a hard time doing that, um, continue to practice. But also I found that even just having the intention around it can be helpful. Um, so that's something else that you can try, just kind of intend that your visualization is gonna get stronger, intend you know, that these positive things are happening to you. Um, and really just to the extent that you can immerse yourself in the feelings or whatever you can pull up um, as you're doing it. And the last thing that I would suggest is just doing it regularly. So, you know, set aside time during the day. Again, it doesn't have to be a lot. I suggest, you know, maybe five minutes a day, really trying to immerse yourself in that visualization, seeing that outcome, feeling it, getting yourself in the mode of it, um, and really just having that feeling. And again, you know, five minutes a day, if you can't do five minutes, do two or three. I think whatever is doable for you is what you should be aiming for. And then, you know, just put it on your routine as something that you're doing on the regular. Um, and I would say too, if you're someone who has a hard time visualizing, some people might practice writing it out. Um, and so you could write out the scene as if it's happening real time, everything that's happening, everything that you're feeling, how people are responding. And sometimes reading it out loud can get you in that same state of mind as if you're visualizing. So that's another technique that you could try. Okay, so that's it for some video, for this video, sorry. Um, just a few tips that you can try out. I'm actually gonna include a link below where you can try out a visualization that I will guide you through and see how that goes for you. As always, make sure to like and subscribe and Dr. Patricia Thompson, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you.